guys welcome back hope you guys are feeling good the Quran is considered by the majority of the Muslim community as being the greatest miracle of the Prophet Muhammad and the Quran contains a significant amount of prophecies that Muslims believe were recited by the Prophet Muhammad which were revealed to him by God now in this episode of FTD facts I'm looking at 10 prophecies by the Prophet Muhammad hey guys my name is Leroy Kenton and for this episode not every prophecy mentioned is going to be directly from the Quran some will be from the hadith which is a collection of the words and actions recorded of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. So let's jump right in. Starting at number 10, we have palace mosque. Now you'll find in the hadith that it is said that the mosque would be like palaces. Muslims believe that even though the prophet had said that any house of Allah should be kept simple, mosques over time became more and more grandiose with huge domes, marble floors, lavish carpets, and all sorts of fancy fixtures. The prediction at number nine was that Pharaoh at the time of Moses will be found. Now there's great debate as to the identity of the Pharaoh in the time of Musa or Moses. However, it is believed that based on the Quran, it was Ramses the second that was Pharaoh at the time. Now the Quran and the Bible state that the Pharaoh was drowned in the sea. However, the Quran does differ from the Bible where it says that the body of the Pharaoh was saved as a sign for future generations. Now the body of Ramses the second had survived in a mummified form and it was discovered in the year 1881 among a group of other royal mummies that had been removed from their original tombs because they were fearful that people would try to steal the bodies. So because of this, Muslims view this as an accurate statement in the Quran. Number eight, the conquest of Mecca was also predicted. That was only six years after the Prophet Muhammad had moved to Medina that he left for Mecca, which is spelled M-A-K-K-A, -K -K -A, also spelled M-E-C-C-A, and he went there for a brief pilgrimage. However, the Meccans stopped him and a peaceful treaty was eventually made after some negotiations and now some articles of the treaty were objected to by believers but the verses in the Quran that were revealed following the treaty describe it as a manifest victory. It says, in truth, God fulfilled the vision of his messenger. You will surely enter the sacred mosque if God wills in full security. You will have your heads shaved, your hair shortened, and you will have nothing to fear. He knew what you knew not, and he granted besides this near victory. He it is who sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth that he may cause it to prevail over all religion. God is enough for a witness. And then one year later, the Muslims performed a minor pilgrimage and then a year after, they conquered Mecca. Number seven is the triumph of the Byzantines. So the Byzantine or the Eastern Roman Empire and the Persian empires were superpowers at the time. Now it was during the years when few believers were actually persecuted in Mecca that the Persians defeated the Byzantines. They conquered places like Aleppo, Antioch, as well as main Syrian provinces and also Jerusalem. And the Persian conquest went on to Egypt and they reached as far as Tripoli in North Africa. Now the following verse in the Quran, which were revealed at that time, told of this victory of the Romans over the Persians. And it says the Romans have been defeated in a land close by, but they after their defeat will be victorious within nine years. He helps to victory who he wills. He is almighty, all compassionate. And that's found in Al-Rum, which is Surah 30 and verses 1 to 5. I just sort of shortened that there for you. Then Heraclius, the Roman emperor, attacked the Persians and beat them within a few years. The Mongol invasion comes in at number six. Now the Prophet Muhammad is believed to also have predicted the Mongol invasion. Saying these words, the hour will not come before you fight against the people with red faces, small slant eyes, and flat noses. They wear hairy leather boots. The prediction of tall buildings comes in at number five. So the Prophet mentioned that there would be signs for warning the approach of the last days. It was said that barefooted Bedouins would be competing in building tall buildings. And like today, if we look in the Arabian Peninsula, we can see that Arabs who used to be herders of camels and sheep are actually really competing to make tall towers. You can find some in Saudi Arabia as well as extremely tall buildings in other various Arab speaking places over in the Middle East. Government forms were also 
Pope predicted. Now, the Prophet Muhammad is also said to have predicted the forms of government after him. So he said this, This affair began with the prophethood as a mercy, then it will be mercy and caliphate. Afterwards, it will change into a cruel monarchy, and finally into an iniquity and tyranny. It's believed he also prophesied saying, Surely the caliphate after me will last 30 years, and afterwards it will be a cruel monarchy. And then at number 3 is a prediction of Fatima's passing. The Prophet is believed to have foretold that Fatima would join him first after he died. Now before his death though, he called his daughter Fatima to his bedside and told her that she would be the first among the family to join him after his death. And then yep. Fatima joined her father six months later. Then at number two, the Prophet Muhammad also informed the Muslims that a false messiah would come and misguide the people. And also a detailed description of the Dajjal was given. He said to be blind in one eye and also said that the Dajjal's right eye would look like a grape. Also Dajjal's left eye would be defective and also green in color. And then his complexion would be ready white. He also describes Dajjal saying that he would have a prominent forehead as well as a wide neck and he would be a short person but also very powerful with a hunch on his back. He would walk with his feet apart so it won't be like a normal person walking. He'll also have long curly and thick hair and it's also said that he would not have any children. And the final prophecy is the prophecy of the end of the world. So a considerable part of the Quran talks about events in the last days, right? And the Quran describes how the world will be destroyed and then rebuilt again and how dead people will be raised and gathered into the place of mustering. And after being judged, they'll go either to paradise or to hell. And the Quran also gives very detailed descriptions of what paradise is like as well as what hell is like. Alright guys, so that was a look at 10 surprising prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad. Wow. Mind blowing. Um, guys, wow, this is beautiful. You know, it's just beautiful to, you know, learn these things about Prophet Muhammad, the things he, he did. It was beautiful watching. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.